mentioned here was this story, which I'm actually surprised about. This is courtesy of Annie Mac, and she tweeted the following. I'm getting up on the screen, actually. She tweeted the following. This is my oldest USB. It was stolen after my before midnight gig in London. Now it's in my manager's office. I was so relieved that it wasn't um, some calculated malevolent act. It was a drunken mistake. And by God, haven't we all done these or done those? Whoever you are, thank you for sending it back. And it's got a note there. Really sorry for the stress to cause. We haven't accessed it. It was a moment of drunken madness. So sorry. So if you remember, I think I mentioned in another podcast that Annie Mac was playing somewhere. I think it might be one of her daytime uh, boomer raves. And um, I guess she was playing and maybe hadn't paid attention as somebody jumped over maybe the flipping DJ booth and took one of her USBs. And um, she was online crying about it. Oh, I want my USB back, please. It's music over free laptops and computers that's not been backed up. It's precious, all this sort of nonsense. And clearly the USB that contained maybe, you know, the evidence that, you know, of why we ended up invading Iraq has kind of found suddenly gone back to our hands. So clearly a good thing. My only one issue with it was number one, if you're a professional DJ, surely at this level, you should be routinely, if not, um, you know, as often as you can, backing up all your USBs or making sure your USBs or your music collection is maybe on one place. And maybe having different copies of it or something. Having it spread across three different places, three different computers, sounds a bit strange to me. Having such, you know, having your whole life depend on, having your whole life depend on, you know, one USB where you return to is also a bit strange in my eyes. But again, what do I know? And also then going to the internet and social media and begging them to kind of find it for you is also a bit strange. And I think maybe it's because I'm just so like against asking for help. And I generally just think, you know, if I ever lose anything, that is my fault. And generally, it's always been my fault, whether it's been to me just kind of not paying attention, maybe me being reckless, uh, me just, you know, whatever, not doing something right that kind of led to whatever I had going missing or somebody taking the opportunity to steal it. Lesson learned. I'm not going to do that again. I've done it plenty of times. I used to lose my keys all the time. And now I haven't lost my keys in many, 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 many years. So clearly, that has worked in some regard. But I feel like this kind of um, carrying of people's favor and sympathy and good nature to return stuff to is just weird. It kind of reminds me of this article I saw recently of some DJ guy or producer. Oh, my whole studio got you know broken into and they stole all my equipment and now I can't make music. Can you guys go fund me so I can make music again? It's like, what? I know it's a distressing thing to get all your equipment stolen, but then to try and set up a GoFundMe for people to, what, to give you money to buy all your stuff again is bizarre. You know, it's a, it's an L, it's a, it's a, it's a blotch on your record. It's not going to make you feel good, but you might have to just go back out there and work for your money and then kind of work your way up to buying your equipment again or, you know, whatever, getting a loan or something. But going to your audience and asking them for money is just strange. In this case, I guess, it's a bit more understanding, understandable, maybe her, you know, panic about it because like I said, she does those boomer raves. So you're, you're assuming everyone that's there is kind of there with, you know, with good intentions. They're kind of there because they support you. There's not probably a lot of like randoms popping by because of the times that they're on. Um, they're usually people that primarily want to go out to those sort of events. So it might be a bit of a, you know, it might kind of hit different when stuff like this happens at those sort of events. But I also, you know, I'm understanding enough to know that anything that revolves around dance music or dance culture or nightlife in any way, shape or form, whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon, is always going to affect, is always going to attract a certain, you know, character of a person. And that's always going to kind of lead to maybe some level of trouble. So keeping your head on a swivel is probably important. But when it comes to um, drunken moments, drunken, embarrassing stories, I thought this would be a good opportunity to share one because the one thing I can think of, because I haven't had an occasion where I've had the urge to jump over somebody's turntables to go and grab their USB. Because again, I'm thinking, was this even plugged in? Was this something that was on the side of the flipping CD that this was playing? I don't really know. But whatever the case may be, I think the last time I can remember me having an embarrassing moment behind or in a club, you know, around the booth, might have been a long time ago and I went to like a Love Fever party. I don't know who was playing, but somebody was playing live. And for whatever reason, I thought it would be funny. Or I thought, no, funny. I thought it would be cool at the time because, you know, 
when someone's playing a good set and they sort of like take down the base and they put it back up again i thought that'd be funny because i absolutely blasted out my mind i think i must have had like you know three and a half grams of flipping md to my face on my own with countless amounts of alcohol and i guess i was pulling up and down the flipping levels and the first time people kind of felt it and you know when you're drunk and you're high you feel like you're the main character of the story you feel like fucking um yeah, you got main character energy, right? You feel like everything you're doing is funny. Everything you're saying is hilarious. Um, every, like, all your actions you're doing, your center of attention. Everyone can't, you know, everyone just wants to be around you. And reality is you're a drunk and mess is getting everyone's nerves. And I did it a second time and a third time. And then I said, yeah, they say, hey, get the fuck out of the fucking DJ room. And I remember that being really embarrassing the day after kind of, you know, apologize and be like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. But I can't ever think of a time where I'd be like in the booth nicking something. You know I mean, it's the last thing I'm thinking in my mind is to take someone's possessions. But again, there are people out there who, you know, don't have the best um, nature out there. So clearly you have to keep your head in the swivel when it comes to these sort of things. But I don't know, personally, I just find it, I don't know. I find it a bit weird. I feel like if something like that gets nicked from you, that's you not paying attention. What are you doing? Spending too much time hugging people behind the booth, you know, distracted, rolling up a cigarette, whatever you were doing. Maybe keep your eyes, you know, on the prize. Maybe treat your your profession that you've been granted so graciously by the public with some respect and just focus on your flipping gig for the time. There's so many things that do that, innit? That get, they're on their phones and stuff. I start thinking to myself, you guys, that get, you literally got the dream job. I've seen these videos of people out here, you know, clanging behind the decks, too drunk and smashed and not taking stuff. Like, you got the dream job. You're employed to work like, what, anywhere between an hour to six hour, eight hour shifts, right? In terms of your, you know, um, behind the booth. But for the most part, you're, you know, it's a pretty easy job. Just commit to just focusing and playing the music behind the DJ booth for that a lot of time. Anything else that happens after the fact happens after the fact. But this idea that a lot of these people have that they need to be doing, going on their phone, drinking, doing lines or doing whatever. It's just crazy. I feel like behind the booth, like focus on the job at hand, please. And, you know, provide the best show possible for your fans. But, you know, whatever. Um, it works out for Annie Mac. Happy for her. Well done. You've got your USB back. Hopefully now she keeps them close to her persons and doesn't turn around in the middle of a set. And maybe they won't get taken away again. And obviously the guy himself, you know, you need to relax as well. If you're taking bath sauces, making make you jump over a DJ room to take someone's USB. It's a bit crazy. But, hey, what do I know? What do I know?